Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to CCXRFC. In this video, we're going to be talking about the brand new Axial SCX24 Bronco. It's a hard body SCX24 and it's absolutely stunning. It's awesome and it'll roll over if you look at it. I mean, it, it yeah, it rolls over very easily. Uh, so if you're not just going on very simple terrain and just kind of basically flat, <laughs> it can do flat pretty well with a little rock to get over. But if you have any steep hills or side hills, it just wants to roll over. We're gonna talk about how to remedy that. This truck right here is performing awesome. Uh, and we'll talk about how we made it so it doesn't roll over so easily. Uh, but I also have another one that we're still comping with. It's still pretty stock and we've also made it so it doesn't roll as easily as stock. Um, but I want this one to still look cool, have the roof rack and all that and not tip over. And so we'll talk about how we were able to accomplish that and uh, some more cool stuff that you guys will want to stick around for. So let's get to it. If you guys are like me, you saw these on the shelves or you saw them in the videos online and you had to have one. Axial releasing a hard body SCX24 that looks absolutely amazing in blue and red and gray. And we've got all of them. Um, this is Dominic's red one. Put a nice scratch on the, the hood of it here. Uh, this is... Well, Anthony has a blue one. This is my blue one. This is our um, upgrade truck to be able to show what upgrading it can do to make it handle better than a stock truck. And this is my one back here. These things roll over quite a bit. It is one of the problems with having such a beautiful detailed body is that it's a hard body and they added all these scale details to make it look awesome, but it just wants to roll over. I call it the Bronco roll. Um, it just... There's a lot of weight up top, so um, you could do things to remove some of that weight. You could remove the interior. You could remove the glass. There's things like that. Uh, remove the top and the tire. That's the one thing that I did do to mine. Um, so there are things you could do. I didn't want to remove more. I think it looks too silly if I remove all of the plastic. I might cut out the windows so it looks like they're rolled down, but just these front four um so yeah so how do we make it handle better that's what we're going to discuss in this video and i've got two different options for making it handle better this is the simple one uh the least uh expensive one and it still is kind of rolly um but it's not as bad as this and uh this is the about 60 to 70 dollar upgrade version maybe a little more uh that handles super awesome I had it out today at Reaction RC Hobby going over the track that we ran last night with these and our class uh, two and three trucks. And um, yeah, this did not so great. This one today did awesome. Uh, we did not try this one. <laughs> this would have been atrocious. Uh, it looks good. It's great for small trails. And you just have to know what you're encountering when you use it. Um, but this is added weight and this is definitely added weight. The tires are, there's no foam in them. They're really kind of soft. Uh, and that can create some other rollover problems, you know, tires collapsing, all that. Although the sidewalls are pretty stiff, but as you run it, they'll break in. All right, so what do we do to this truck that's allowed? We change the wheels and tires. Again, you have to do this because in this class, uh, they limit it to stock trucks. So, um, we did the Proline Hyrax, that's what the, the class allows, and you're allowed to change the servo, and we're running stock. But other than that, the only thing that we did was remove the top, which is easy to do. You remove these two screws, this slides out, it's just kind of hooked on to plastic here in the back, pulls out, there's four screws in there, you remove them, the top comes right off, easy. The rear tire has a screw on it, just like that. Take that off and that would reduce weight. And that's what I've done with this one. I did not cut it off. Uh, this one I did cut it off because this is my comp truck. This one I'm going to probably try it with the tire on again, wheel tire, and see how it does. Um, so, yeah, removing those two things removed a lot of extra weight up top, especially the rear tire. Um, so let's talk about that. That's one of the ways. All these have their batteries in them, and we're just going to give them a quick weight to show you uh, how they compare. We'll do it in grams. They're under a pound still. So this is about 306 grams right here as it sits. And that's with the wheel and the stocked wheel and tires and all that. So 308. 
This one is 288. So we shaved 20 grams off it by removing the top and the rear tire. And that weight is upper weight. Um, so that's huge. So what we did with the other truck, as you'll see, is we added lower weight in order to combat the rolling. Just doing this alone helped so much with it rolling backwards, rolling tipping forward, sideways, everything. Um, the other thing that we did do is we flipped the bumper mounts. These little mounts right in here, this little shaped piece right here, it looks like a Z. There's two screws, one there and one up there. Uh, holds it to the frame and holds it to the bumper. Those two mounts normally go down, but what you do is you take them off and you flip the sides and they bolt right back up um, and fit right back into your rails. And it makes it, one, fit way better as your seam across the front. It raises the height of the bumper so you get clearance as you're approaching obstacles. Um, so what you have to do then is you do have to remove two screws here and lift up your body post Velcro mount. But looks good like this. I threw on the Hoonigan decals because I had to put one over the back here because I didn't cut it very good. I just used scissors. Um, let's talk about this one. So again, we have this one sitting at 306 to 308 ounce grams. This one is 384. <laughs> so we've added 78 grams basically to this one. How do we do that? Because we removed the tire weight, the rear tire. And so that helped remove some of the weight already. So where do we gain that extra weight? Well, for one, these tires have foams in them. These are aluminum rims. They're not going to be that much heavier than the stock plastics, but it's a little bit of an added weight, I would guess, there. It's negligible. We'll, we'll go with that. It's pretty negligible. But what we did do is I put on an aluminum servo tray. It's one of my CCXRC ones that holds the Emacs servos. We put an Emacs digital servo in here. It's a little bit bigger servo, so there's a little weight there. It's the es 0 8 md 2 that's the uh, digital version of theirs. They have an analog one. On top of that, I stuck a one-half ounce um, piece of metal right here, and that's just added weight right there on the axle, which is great. Front weight, keep the front end down. Uh, and then, so that's about 14 grams. Then we added nine grams, eight to nine grams here with this uh, brass diff cover in the front. This is a CCXRC Brandon one, again, this isn't anything special. Lots of companies make this and, you know, or just get their logo put on it, basically. So uh, I thought it would look cool with the logo on it there. I liked the black brass, and so um, that's what we did, the black brass with the chamfered edges uh, that allow the, the brass to show through, and then the logo. Um, these are Metal Hot Racing Steering Links. Again, a lot of people make these. Um, I'm out of stock on them right now. I had some. Um, but since there are so many like this, I decided to do, have them make them out of brass for me this time. And so, uh, we're going to add some weight by having those brass in the future. Um, but as it is right now, that's not necessary. And then in the rear, we've got another brass diff cover here. You can see it in more detail. That's the CCXRC one. I think it looks cool with it sitting there, the logo, you know, driving around, seeing that little little logo of something in there, kind of a cool look. So that adds weight. The other thing that we did is, and we'll talk about this, because it's about performance keeping you from rolling, is uh, what this upgrade does. And that is going to be putting the overdrive gears in the front. They are the 13.2. It's about a 23% overdrive, only in the front. We're not trying to increase overall speed. We're trying to increase the front tire speed so that it will... Um, pull the truck more with having this spinning more instead of the back end pushing it and pushing it over when you're climbing hills the front end is actually going to be pulling it up the hills which will really help with rolling um, on hills also improved steering um, so there's some definite improvements by having that i like the roof rack too much to take it off we're trying to be able to keep all this stuff on um, these are a little problematic for comping because of gates it's one more thing that sticks out to catch on a gate um, these little rings here on the front actually do work, and we used them last night for winching. Um, but the other thing that really does help a lot is having a 
uh, powerful enough motor. Now, I'm not trying to make this thing into a Class 3 truck with this body, although it handled about as good as my Class 3 trucks on the trail when I took it out today. So I had this out last night so that other people could test it. I'm testing a Baby Goliath motor is what we're calling. Uh, I'm making some motors for CCXRC. Uh, I'm trying to get it to handle exactly how I'm thinking it should, having enough low end power, but still having the wheel speed to make some climbs. So it's kind of, there's trade off in both. You know, I always want more smooth torque at the low end for crawling, but if you don't have wheel speed at times, you're, you're, you're out of luck. DNF did not finish because you can't make it. Um, maybe with a winch you could, but, um, yeah. So let's talk about it. This is helpful as well for rolling uh, because with the stock motors, it can creep. With these new systems in them, they can go very slow, as you'll see in the videos. Uh, but the second you hit an object or you have a hill climb too much, it doesn't have enough low-end power to just keep going up slowly. You have to increase the wheel speed in order to get up. That becomes a problem in that, that momentum and that the revolutions of your tires being faster will also make it want to roll um, or you'll bounce off of things. So it can get more problematic with rolling as well if you're trying to wheel speed up everything. This has the grunt to help you just slowly pull up things and just let your tires eat until they get traction or warm up and get traction. It's pretty impressive. Um, so far, the motor's been running cool with all we've put it through. Um, and I have several of these out being tested. And uh, so I'm not going to give any of the specs on it just yet. I'm kind of keeping those close to uh, my vest here uh, until we get them out and available. And then I'll um, talk about what we did uh, internally with these as far as for the, the power and the speed ratio that we're going for. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. But again, I only have two of them that I'm testing. I'm waiting to see if other people are having the same experience with the ones that I sent them to test. And, uh, so yeah, uh, but overall the two that I've tested have been pretty, pretty smooth. Uh, and it does change a little when you overdrive the front, you lose a little bit of that, but you're going to do that. I think with any motor. Um, so yeah, so that's one thing to take into account. You may or may not want to overdrive then. Um, I overdrive or maybe choose the 14% instead of the 23%. Uh, if you want to keep a little bit more of that uh, smoothness. I still think it was fine. Um, and one of the things that I did notice is when I thought it wasn't doing as good because of this, I was still running the battery from last night. And as the battery drains, the power delivery changes and it wasn't being as smooth. And I noticed it because the lights kind of would flicker and brown out. And then I realized, oh, my battery's low. That's why I'm having trouble keeping it smooth. Put in a fresh battery pack and everything was fine and dandy again. So just something to note when you're out there, make sure you're fresh when you're running, especially if you're comping. Uh, make sure you got fresh batteries in there. But I'm impressed with the motor so far. Again, the verdict is out till I speak with everybody that has them and hear what their final thoughts are on them. Uh, see how we're going to move forward uh, with them and if I'm going to have them made. Uh, if not, we'll go back to the drawing board as far as what specifications we want. And uh, it'll be called the Baby Goliath regardless, since it's not out for public yet. Uh, but that is the name that we're going with. So, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm digging these Broncos, especially now. This thing, like I said, it did about what my comp uh, Class 3 trucks did last night. I was able to do with this thing with the hard body. With stock shocks, not really the extended shocks, without the big old tires, too, that the other trucks have, which do help with a lot of things, clearance and, and so many things to keep you pushed away from the gates and all that. So um, let's take a look at it. I'll narrate a little bit of what's going on with this and what my thoughts are on the motor, but also how the truck is handling and where I might have rolled before if I hadn't done some of these upgrades um, and we'll go based on the color because I, I also know where this one might have rolled, which we or we used a winch to keep from rolling. But this one, this would have been problematic pretty much everywhere um, because I ran this one stock last night except for the motor and it rolled everywhere. <laughs> so, all right, let's do it. All righty, guys, here I am at Reaction RC Hobbies 
hitting it up on their tabletop mini course and you can see right here these wheels are just going slow and they're digging into the dirt no wheel speed needed it's just a nice slow smooth crawl the difference however when you're running the stock system i would have rolled right there um, with the stock body maybe even coming down the downside i probably would have rolled and stock i did i was able to make it through here last night with the stock body um you just had to have the right line like this and keep it pretty level um so if you fell into that gap at all you were a goner but that's with either one so really not a good um source right here definitely would have rolled as i'm coming off of this um i believe with the back side nope actually it would have been good there um so yeah all through here would have been all right with the stock one you can see I'm trying to wheel speed it because I do have that overdrive in the front and I was trying to get it to pull around the front end by just quick little bursts and make it kind of jump its way around. But um, yeah, you can see down through here, all this is pretty simple, but it's nice and slow and it's just creeping over everything. Now I will say the one difference is that it doesn't have the FOC control that my brushless ones do. And so that is a noticeable difference because with the FOC, when you come on to something like right here, it would have kept basically wanting to keep the motor revolutions turning at that same speed uh, instead of encountering something and, you know, that stopping it. So it, it wants to maintain speed. This, you have to throttle input. That would have been a rollover for sure with the stock one without the weight down low. But all of this, I mean, this was difficult even in my class three, and I was going way slower right there. Just let it eat nice and slow, uh, composed. This is an axle hanger right here, so I might have to, I don't remember, wheel speed it. This is, yeah, right here. This is when that extra wheel speed comes in handy. You can hear it. There's some speed there. Um, and then it just goes back to slow crawling. I mean, it, it's just... It, it feels like a really solid motor, and I thought um, that it wasn't as good uh, when I put the overdrive in, and it just turned out that it was a battery. I was running a, an old battery, and it was basically on its last uh, last little bit of power. So um, all this is simple. Um, would not have fallen off of here um, or tipped over on any of this stuff. This is a pretty simple part of the course, um, but it just keeps working nice and slow control when you're hit, coming to these gates having that low speed control is so important especially when you have obstacles in front of you um all this this sand pit sometimes needs some wheel speed didn't need it here it actually steered through it pretty perfectly that was the end of the course i was able to do it pretty quickly and i don't think i hit any gates uh in doing it so I might have hit one on the bridge. That was me rushing, the coming up on it, and it was sliding off as I was walking around the table and not really looking, um, which I wouldn't have done in a comp, first of all. But, um, yeah. So if I did hit one, that that's a gimme gate pretty much. And uh, I think I would have made it through pretty clean. So this for sure, you can see the wheel speed needed there to get it up and over the little ledge and then you go back to the nice slow controlled crawl um but yeah pretty impressed with the motor so far in the testing we've been doing with it other people used it also agreed that it felt very smooth um, the other nice thing that i found is it doesn't really get that hot uh, some motors tend to get warm um, so yeah that would have been a tip over right there just that little bump up Probably would have tipped the stock one. But having that weight down on those axles really makes those axles stay planted to the ground. And I'm just running stock shocks, and it's doing pretty good flexing. You know, the truck has it in it. You just box stock. You can't allow it to flex because it rolls over if you have any extended amount of flex to it. It means that you're leaning somewhere. Right here probably would be a tip point with that. You can see the top leaning over. And it's actually those wheels are wanting to lift off, but they're not. So that would have definitely been a rollover point as well as coming down here. Um, I had luckily had a wall <laughs> to set myself against there. Um, but all kinds of rollover points right there. You can see those tires wanting to lift. And uh, we're just fighting it to keep, keep tires down and let it drop like that.
But again, that's where that control is so helpful to have and uh, not have to wheel speed. You need that little bit of extra torque so that the motor will still spin even when it has that resistance against it. Um, but I mean, for a Bronco, if you've driven one, what it's doing right here is pretty impressive um, through all of this. So, uh, yeah, I was very happy with the change. Again, having driven it here last night or the night before, box stock with this motor in it and how often I was rolling it over, this was pretty awesome. So, anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. As always, again, these parts that I talked about, many of them you can find on ccxrc.com, like the brass diff covers, um, the Emac servo mount is on there. We'll have the steering links again very soon. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next time.